we just we've been looking at displacement time graphs. Now we're going to look at velocity time graphs. So let's imagine the following scenario. We're going to be plotting the motion of an athlete. Looking at his velocity against time. So our athlete goes for a run. He starts at rest and he gradually increases his speed over the first 30 seconds. Until he reaches 5 meters per second. He then maintains 5 meters per second for, thir for 60 seconds. So his speed is constant for another 60 seconds. So this takes us to, oh, it'll take us to 90 because the 60 out of 30 is 90. Then he gradually reduces his speed until coming to rest after another 30 seconds. So this takes us to 120. Then <clears throat> the athlete then returns to his starting point. So now we're going to be going in a negative velocity. Um, he returns to his starting point. He increases his speed quickly at the start and then continually, continually trying to increase his speed for 90 seconds. So this will be from 120 for to 90 will be 210. So he quickly increases his speed but he keeps trying to increase it until we get to here. So it's going to be curve. The maximum speed he reaches is 6 meters per second. He then slows down for 10 seconds before coming to rest at the start. So that'll be 220. So this is time in seconds. So we can see the stages of his motion. At the beginning he's going from rest up to 5 meters per second and he's increasing at a constant rate. His acceleration is constant. Here he's not accelerating but he's going at a constant speed and here he's decelerating to rest. Now you can imagine our athlete starting off his run and he comes to this point, some point here and then he turns back and he runs in the opposite direction. Um, so in this direction our velocity is positive and in this direction it's a negative velocity. <coughs> and that's what we see here. Now here we have we don't have a straight line, we have a curve to indicate that he's accelerating. He's accelerating first quickly but then the rate of acceleration decreases as he reaches his maximum speed and in here this should be a straight line because it's a constant deceleration back to his starting point. Now you can see if I'm, just, I'm going to draw let's, let's draw just a very basic time velocity Let's imagine we started off at point U and we came to point V in some time T. The gradient would be V minus U over T, which is also our, our equation for acceleration. So the gradient of a velocity time 
graph is equal to the acceleration. Also, the area under a velocity um, time graph gives us the displacement. Now, say we have we could look at this one. Let's look at this one here. So let's look at the area under this. I'm going to draw what this area would look like here. You know, there, 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 there. That's the shape that the area makes. This would be U, this would be V, and this height here is T. Now, if you look at this, this is a trapezoid shape. Shape of a trapezium. Now the area of a trapezium is the is half. Um, if you were to flip that on its side, I'm just going to draw a trapezium here. A, B, and H. It's half A plus B over H. For for this, the area here would be half u plus v times t because if you think about it, the trapezium it's like the trapezium has been flipped through, 100 and, um, through 90 degrees so this is like our line a this is like b because these are parallel one another these parallel lines they're parallel one another and the height would be the time if we're looking at this area from this graph here um, so that would be our displacement. Now, <clears throat> if we were to go back, I'm going to go back and look at our last um, if we were to go back and look at this velocity displacement graph of our athlete the area, if you were to do this area, well area 1, and this area, 2, the displacement is going to be, the total displacement is going to be 0. So the area 1 plus area 2 would equal zero because that's going to be a positive displacement. This is going to be a negative displacement, and they'll add together to be zero because they've um, because athletes return to the original point. So this brings up to a very important um, point when you're dealing with these sorts of problems. You really need to make sure you're thinking. When's the velocity positive? When's it negative? When's acceleration positive? When is it negative? Um, so you don't get your signs in a muddle. So we're now going to look at an example. So Arthur travels at a constant speed of 5 meters per second for 10 seconds. Then he decelerates at 
a constant rate of 0.5 meters per second squared until coming to rest. Okay, so we want to work out the Arthur's velocity time graph. So we know is a constant speed of 10 meters per second. Put our units in here. The time is in seconds. Is it a con constant speed of no, it's not 10. It's 5 meters per second for 10 seconds. Then it decelerates, but we don't know how long, how um, long the second part of his motion is. So let's think about V equals U plus AT. So the final speed is going to be zero. His initial speed is five, because so this is, for the second part of his mo motion starts, he's starting at five. Then he decelerates, so it's minus 0.5 times T. So T must be 10 seconds. 10 seconds there. Oh, it was 20. So the total T is 10 plus 10 equals 20. Now, Bran Brendan travels at a constant 4 meters per second from the same time and place. Show that Arthur and Brendan are travelling at the same <coughs> speed at 12 seconds. So, um, and hence find the furthest Arthur gets ahead of Brendan. <coughs> so this is going to be Brendan's motion is 4 meters per second. Okay? So we want to think this point here is 10. We want to find out how far do, how long does it take Arthur to get to 4 meters per second? So the final speed for this would be 4. He starts at 5 and he's decelerating at 0.5 t. So I'm just using the same equation here. So 4, you take the 5 over here, it's going to be 4 taken by 5 is minus 1 equals z minus 0.5 t. So t must be 2 seconds. So this point here, from 10 to here, is 2 seconds, so that must be 12. Uh, because, so that they are at the same Arthur and Brendan are both at 4 meters per second at 12 seconds. Now, <coughs> we want to find their 
the largest displacement. So first we're going to find out in this 12 seconds what is Arthur's displacement. So Arthur's displacement is going to be the area we split this, his displacement up to this area, this rectangle, for the first 10 seconds, which would be 10 times 10 times 5. Then we're going to add this little triangle, this um, little triangle here, plus um, a half. Two times one plus this rectangle down here, which will be two, because that's just two times four. So if we do that, it's going to be fifty. Add um, one. Add. Eight, which is 59 meters. Now for Brendan, it's just going to be 4, it's heights 4 times 12. It's going to be 48. So the, the, the um, largest displacement will be the difference between them, so we'll take SA minus SB is going to be 59, take away 40, is 11 metres. Now, final part of our question is, show that for t greater than 10, the gap is given by G of t equals, oh, I'm just going to write this down here because I'm going to write that space. G of t equals 1 quarter t squared plus 6t minus 25. And we want to find when does Brendan overtake. So, we need to find a general formula for the displacement. So we're going to think of SA first. So for the first 10 seconds, we have a displacement of 50 because it's that 10 times 5. Now, let's look at this last bit, this second bit of the motion. So we've got this here. From 10 here, then you've got this time, and the, the, the motion tails off. Now we could be thinking, let's think of some time t here. And I think we wanted some time t because we want it to be a general formula. So let's think of some time t here. Then the area under the graph would be um, this is velocity. this area here, which is our trapezium, where the area here would be, the displacement for this, this trapezium would be half the starting velocity here, which was 5, half of 5 plus whatever this velocity here would be. V of t times what t is. The total t would be t minus 10. Whatever this 10, this times here, minus this 10. That's going to be a t. Now v um, is u 
plus a t, which is the, th the, the initial speed, which was 5, then the acceleration, which is minus 0 0.5 times t. So our general, taking all this information, um, Arthur's displacement is the 50 plus a half, we'll look at the t here, t minus 10, then we're going to open a bracket and we're going to have 5 plus then this. 5 minus 0 0.5. Now t is t minus 10. So that value of t is this, the slowest value of t here. <coughs> so let's, open, let's multiply all that out. So we've got 50. Um, we've got 5 and 5 is 10. So that's going to be 5. 5, 10 t divided by 2 is going to be 5 t minus 10 plus that's a half and that's a half so it's a quarter t minus 10 and we're going to make that square t minus 10 times t minus 10, t minus 10 squared. I'm just going to keep the brackets in just now. So that is, oh, that's minus. That's a minus. Now SB for Brendan will be 5 times um, 4 times t. So the g of t must be take Arthur's fifty plus five t minus ten minus a quarter t minus ten squared minus four t. Now we're going to expand the brackets out, so we'd have 50 plus 5t minus 50, so those two are going to um, get cancelled out, minus a quarter, that's going to be um, t squared minus 20t plus 100 minus 4t. So 50 is cancelled. We've got 5t minus 4t is going to be t minus a quarter t squared. 20 divided by 4 is going to be 5. So we have plus 5t because the minus and the minus. Um, then minus a quarter times a hundred is going to be minus twenty five. So that's going to be minus a quarter t squared plus six t minus twenty five, which is what we wanted. Now for when they overtake, the over when they overtake, the gap's going to be zero. So g of t will be zero. But I'm going to put this onto a new screen because I'm running out of space. So we have g of t. Um, equals minus a quarter t squared plus 6t oops, minus 25 and we're going to make that equal 
to zero. Now we want to get rid of this minus a quarter, so we're going to multiply through by by minus four. So we'll have t squared minus twenty four t plus a hundred equals zero. Now if we were to use the quadratic um, formula, we will get which I'm not going to do because you can. That's not yeah. It's easy enough to go through. T will come out as either 5.2, um, 5.37 or 18.6. But earlier on, in the question, we said this is for T greater than 10. So this T must be 18.6 seconds when they overtake or when Brendan overtakes Arthur. Um, so I hope that helps.